Okay, welcome to part two of our video here. What I'm going to talk about is, I believe it's question number 14, where it says you, you throw an object up, and then it comes back down, and then the question is, well, how fast did you throw it? So, let's break down this motion. So here we are, oops, there we go, that's not good. So basically, we're looking at this case. We take an object and we throw it directly upward. Here's our object. Let's try to be nicer. There we go. And throw it directly up. So this will go up. And from experience, we know that this will actually stop momentarily. So I'm just going to model that right here. Now clearly this will go up and down in the same plane. But what I'm going to do is just spread it out. Just so you can see what's going on. The very top, if you throw an object, it actually will stop briefly. You'll have to imagine this, and I'll demonstrate this in class. So go up, stop, and then come back down. So then, notice that there's no arrow there for velocity. That it will actually go back down like this. And the question in number 14 was, what is the velocity at which you throw the ball? Right here. So a couple things about this. Um, now notice that when this thing goes up and down, from here to here, notice that it goes up the same distance and then down the same distance. And it's under the same influence of gravity. So, let me do this, let me actually move this a little bit. Can I move this? I can, no, just ever so slightly. Do a different color green. Now remember gravity, G, the acceleration due to gravity is actually the same in all locations. The acceleration, G, same in all locations. Another way to say this is we didn't turn gravity off. Gravity doesn't just stop working just because it stopped momentarily. So it's independent of motion. Pretty cool, actually. So whether the object's being thrown up, stops, or comes down, gravity's always pulling downward. But if you notice, let's see if I can select that's red or black. Okay, there we go. But notice that the velocity changes, right? The velocity goes from being positive, I'll just put VP positive, zero, and technically it's negative. Now something else that's true is that the velocity you throw it at, as long as you catch it in the same spot, will be the same. So just to play with numbers here, if you throw this ball at five meters per second here, allow it to go up and travel the same distance, d, it will actually end up the same speed. Except, notice the negative for down. Like this. So, the velocity changes. Now that makes sense, hopefully, because we said that there is an acceleration. and it is gravity that causes this change. Now this is of course intuitive, in other words we know that gravity causes things to come back down, but sometimes we forget that, um, especially when you have something complex like this, this complex motion. So anyway, um, that's just some information about an object being thrown up and down. This is all under free fall too. So the question was phrased something like this, right? If it takes, let's make up what it takes, four seconds for the ball to travel up and down um, what speed did you throw the ball? I don't think it's exactly worded like this, 
speed to throw the ball. But you get the idea. So first of all, anytime I see any sort of thrown or free fall, this keyword right here, I know I have to use free fall equations. And I know I need to find speed. That's what I need to find. So I need to find V in free fall. So I hope the connection goes to this. This is what we're going to use to find this problem out. Regardless of what the motion is right now, this is your first step. But the question is asking for, I'm just going to move this back up a little bit. You know, how far must I, you know, how fast must I throw it so that the total time is four seconds, right? So here's one way to approach this problem. This is trick number one. Notice that if I cut this problem in half, so I cut this in half and start from the top, we'll see that this is just like a dropped object on this side. So this is, can be reduced to something like with an initial velocity zero, this falls some distance, and we want to find VF here which is exactly how we can use this. The question is, what is this time? So time is not going to be four seconds, because that's the time it takes to go up and down. So this yellow here, I'm going to color this up, right? That's four seconds. But this green is just half that time, which is two seconds. So that's the extra step that I had to do here, is that this time is not four, but two seconds, like that. So now look what we have. V is going to equal to G, which is our value we know because it's a falling object, times two seconds. And this problem, let's pretend that this is it, and this becomes 19.6 meters per second. And quite technically, we say negative or down. Either one works. However, the question didn't ask for this. It asked for this part right here, right? How far or how fast must you throw it? Well, just like I told you before, if this is negative 19, negative just meaning down here, well then, we can assume that you had to have thrown it at that same speed like this. So those should have been equal like that. Um, and that's one way you can technically approach this problem. Um, which is how, you know, you can try this out with just, you know, this equation right here. Uh, another approach to this problem, which is not obvious and it was not given at all, but if you're doing more advanced well, not more advanced, but here is another way you could do it. We can actually use the acceleration equation to find this. But instead, A is the acceleration which we can substitute for G, because we know the acceleration, so this would become G. like that. And then what we can do is again we can use the fact that this is one half, right? So if I want to start off, we don't know what the initial is, but we know if we break it in half that the final will be zero at the top. Of course I would have gone over this in class, so this would have been a little more clear. So, what can we do with that? So, final equals zero, like that. Time, remember it's half, so it can't be four, it has to be two. G is 9.81. Then we could have done something like this. Final velocity is zero. 
minus the initial divided by 2. Now notice that this gives you exactly the same expression here, but it gives you positive. So 2 comes up, this becomes 19.6 meters per second equals negative um, vi. Um, well, technically, this is going down to, that will solve our negative issue. There we go. Sorry about that. And then this would be positive meaning it's thrown upward, which makes sense. Same answer. But the key to this problem is time must be divided in half. Because it makes our problem a little easier like that. So that's the key to that problem right there. So um, and that's the reasoning why we do such a thing. So I hope this helps for number 14. And let me know if you have any more questions um, before the homework is due. I'll see how everyone does and um, kind of go from there. All right. Have a nice day.